Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about ozone generation. So first up, we'll talk about what ozone actually is. Um, it's sometimes referred to as activated oxygen. Um, that's because it has three atoms of oxygen connected versus the standard two. This allows it to have a chemical reaction basically when it comes into contact with pretty much anything uh, of oxidation. Oxidation is what's going to actually kill the mold, virus, um, pests, anything that it can basically touch. Uh, this is found in nature. Um, you'll find it after a rainstorm or during a lightning strike anywhere around you. You'll smell and feel that extra ozone layer. So it's not like we're producing something that's not found out there already and that your body's not already exposed to. Um, there's also the UV layer of, uh, sorry, ozone layer above the planet that actually protects us um, from the sun's rays. So once again, it's, it's all around us already. Now there is safe levels and unsafe levels and we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, but as long as it's used properly, it is one of the strongest sterilants in the world. It's about 3,000 times stronger or better than uh, bleach when it comes to broad spectrum microbial sterilization. Um, so first we'll talk about using it as a sterilant because it's the best use for it. Um, if you wanted to sterilize a basement or a space that you were going to start putting plants into and you were worried about any kind of mold or mildew or pest, it's a great tool to go ahead and just sterilize a large area cheaply and effectively and pr pretty quickly. If you have a bunch of equipment that you'd like to sterilize, you can pile that equipment into a space and put your ozone generator in there, turn it on, and it will sterilize basically all your equipment without having to go through and touch every single piece with a piece of cloth and bleach. So that's also great for just effective, quick sterilization of equipment and spaces. It's one of my favorite ways to use it. And when you're using it that way, we can get a little bit higher on the levels. Um, as long as you're not gonna be going in there, you can pretty much crank it up. Um, I'd say 400 to 500 mg or milligrams per, per hour is pretty standard for an average size room and if you were doing sterilization you could probably go a little bit higher than that don't go in there until it's dissipated and that's the other beauty of ozone is that even if it doesn't really come into contact with anything it has a half-life of about 30 minutes so half the ozone that was there when you started will be there in 30 minutes if you still can smell it it's too high give it another 30 minutes and half the ozone will now be in there and so on and so forth until you have safe levels to go back into the room if you can ever smell the ozone especially strong it's at a too high of a level the safe zone they say for ozone is 0.1 parts per million. It's not very easy to test. There are testers that will just basically give you a safe and an unsafe reading, but if you can smell it, you're getting close or above to that safe level. Um, ideally, in a garden, if we were actually using it with plants in the room, which is debated whether you'd want to do that or not, you would only run it to the tune of not being able to smell ozone and not being able to smell plants that's what you would be shooting for. If you could smell the plants, we need a little bit more ozone, and if you can smell the ozone, we need to turn it down a little bit. But the debate would be that using ozone inside of a garden could have some adverse effects on your flavor and aroma and overall quality, which leads me to the next use of ozone generation, which would be exhausting. Um, if you are using ozone generation mainly for odor, you might wanna think about using it in your exhaust line. There's a couple ways to do this, and there's a couple different styles of ozone, and you one would be better for the exhaust than the other. Um, UV sterilization, once again, uses a light bulb, and this is UV ozone, I'm sorry, uh, uses a light bulb, it creates a wavelength, and this is what does the sterilization and the ozone generation. This is what's recommended for indoor use for sterilization of your house, of your spaces, of your equipment, of, like I said, vets or um, hospitals use this. It's going to be the ultraviolet ozone generation. For exhaust generation only, um, ozone generation only, uh, we're gonna recommend the Corona Discharge. I don't have one right in front of me. Um, they are an inline style uh, ozone generator. And the way they do that is they basically have a fine metal grid that's connected um, at, to the machine and it makes, believe it or not, very small little lightning strikes theoretically inside there creating ozone a separate way. All, the only problem with this is that it makes nitric acid as a byproduct, which is something we don't want in our house or near our plants. So that's why Corona Discharge ozone generation is only going to be recommended for exhaust systems. Because of that, they actually come in a lot stronger 
and make uh, stronger uh, machines. They can make a lot more generation a lot quicker because they're designed to handle fast moving air with a lot of smell uh, for big commercial gardens. So once again, getting back to the amount that you might need um, for small gardens, we're looking at about uh, up to 100 or less uh, mg per hour, milligrams per hour. Uh, for medium to average size gardens, we're shooting for four to 500 milligrams per hour. And then if we're going up to commercial spaces, we'd probably be at one gram per hour um, or more. Um, but keep in mind, I would say the majority of people are using them for sterilization or for odor control in the exhaust. If you are going to use a UV ozone generator for exhaust odor control, think about building some kind of ballast, uh, ballast box or some kind of extra ducting that you can wrap around to give the air ample time to mix with the ozone to kill the odor. If you don't give it enough time to mix with the ozone, you'll end up with you know still having odor molecules coming out of your exhaust system. So about 25 feet of ducting or so should be safe um, if you wanted to put this per se 25 feet and then uh, into your ducting, that extra 25 feet would give you the time you need for that um, odor to mix with the ozone and to completely oxidize it. Um, the people have also built boxes to allow the air just to circulate inside there before it moves through there. It's another way that you can use the ultraviolet ones to help kill odor on the exhaust. The amount that we need in our gardens, that's gonna dictate quite a bit about which one we purchase. Um, the ozone generator BOZ1 does about 5,500 cubic feet um, an hour. Um, they do make quite a bit smaller models. This Uvenair comes in a thousand, I think 3,000 and 5,000 cubic feet per hour. So really depending on the space that you have, you wanna make sure you pick the correct model. And then we're gonna run that on a timer to make sure that the amount that we have in our space doesn't exceed healthy levels and is doing what we need it to do, whether that's sterilizing or killing odor. Um, so keep that in mind. All this stuff's available on our website. We also have the Corona Discharge models on our website in various sizes for all your different needs. Um, come check us out. There's some more info on ozone generation there. Uh, thanks for watching the video and we'll check you next time.